That's over 90 feet tall, and all of our kings and queens lived in there for well over 500 years. They lived on the top floor there, away from the sights, sounds and smells of all the horrible common people. The floors below, there was an audience chamber, Bankton Hall, there was accommodation for knights, ladies and bodyguards, and the oldest Norman chapel in the countries in there. Today, that building is full of arms, armour, weapons and displays. You've got to see it to get there. You get to the end, you turn right twice, the wooden stairs are on the other side. When we finish the tour, you'll be free to have a wander around. So I'm very quickly going to take you around the buildings so you know where most things are. If you look to your left in the corner, that is the entrance to the bloody tower. Downstairs will tell you about the imprisonment and the eventual execution of one of our most famous sailors, Sir Walter Raleigh. Upstairs will tell you more information and show you a film on the disappearance and the murder of the two boy princes. That area over there, between the two sets of blue doors, that's private residential accommodation. All the Yoma warders live here with our families and some of them live in the blue doors. The black and white L-shaped building in the corner is the only surviving wooden framed Tudor building left in the city of London. All of the rest destroyed in the Great Fire of London of 1666. It was built in 1540 by Henry VIII and he built it for the boss of the tower. We call them the constables. There's been 160 of them. The man who lives there at the moment is General the Lord Horton of Richmond and his wife, Lady Horton. <coughs> if you move around further, you see a stone tower there, the Beecham Tower. You've got to go inside there and go upstairs. It's where the high value prisoners were kept. While they were in execution or release, they made intricate carvings into the stonework of the walls. There's over 90 carvings in there. Some of them are 500 years old. Behind me, there's two more blue doors. Again, private residential accommodation. The one directly behind me is the Royal Doctor. We are locked in at night. Here's our medical cover. Next to him is the Royal Chaplain in charge of the beautiful Chapel Royal of St. Peter ad Vincula. You can go in there afterwards to see what we're talking about. The last building I'm going to bore you with, there it is. That is the mighty Waterloo Barracks, built in 1845 to replace a burned down storeroom. It was built by our most famous soldier. He laid the keystone with his bare hands, the Iron Duke, the Duke of Wellington. And he named it the Waterloo Barracks to remind us and future generations of his defeat and the final destruction, thank God, of the French tyrant Napoleon Bonaparte. It held a thousand soldiers of the Royal Guard. It still holds the Royal Guard, but they're upstairs. Because the whole bottom floor, something you may be interested in, should you go through the door underneath the golden clock, you will see the crown jewels and the raw regalia of Great Britain. One of the largest collections of precious stones and precious metal in the world. In there, you will see the largest cut diamond in the world. 530.2 carats, the start of Africa, the Colonel One. It's about the size of an egg. It's beautifully lit and it is beautifully set. You are taken past it on a moving walkway. Ladies, your eyes are going to see that diamond. Then your heart is going to want that diamond. <laughs> you move from there to the next display, under no circumstances must you look down at your left hand. <laughs> you do that, then those thoughts that have been swirling around the back of your mind for years, they're going to become words. <laughs> those words are going to be transferred to the front of your mind, and in one blinding flash, you're going to realise that you have You've married a loser. <laughs> this area here, this is Tower Green. It's the village green of the Tower of London. It's my village green. I've lived in a lot of villages over the years. They've all had something cool on the green. Duck pond, pub, cricket pitch, children's play area. Ours has got nothing on, it's really boring. It's not even allowed to walk on the grass. The only thing we do have we have a hideously overpriced piece of modern art. There it is, look. 
<laughs> See that hideously overpriced piece of modern art there? That sits on a small paved area. The paved area is a private royal execution site. Don't get this area mixed up with Tower Hill. 75 executions up there, only six executions here. Three of them though, Queens of England. We talk about what happened. Before that, I want to set the scene. Brand new wooden scaffold, a platform built here for every execution. Lords and ladies, invitation only, standing exactly where you're standing now. Let's go back to the year 1536.